So this question looks like it's a diagram question. But it's also a very long question, so we're going to definitely have to translate some things here. And I always like to like call out the fact that uh, this is a graph question. So with graphs, we can always get a little bit more information out than is typical. So what I'm going to do with this graph to start out with is I am going to make some units on this graph. And you may wonder why, but the best thing, the best value that graphs give you on this test, I just want to make sure I'm like equidistant, as close as I can at least. Now, that may not be perfect, but it's good enough. Maybe my, my B axis here can be adjusted a little bit. Yeah, I think I like that a little bit better. All right. So, and even down here can be adjusted a little bit. Okay, I think that's a bit better. So, when I have a graph, the 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 added value is that I can always use the units to, you know, as a as a plug-in um option here. What they did not give us was they did not give us any units here. So, I'm just going to draw them in myself. I'm going to label them, right? So, this is 1, this is 2 negative one, negative two, negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three, which means that Z1 is the point negative two comma three, and Z2 would be, um, I'll just call it negative 1.8, let's call it, comma, 0.8. And for Z3, I'm going to call that negative 2. It's actually, so negative 1.8. I probably should just call it a 2, but that's fine. Negative 1.8 comma negative 2. And Z4, I'm going to call 1 comma negative 1. And Z5, I'm going to call... 2 comma 1. Okay, so let's read the question now. So again, I always like to take the diagram, do what I can. So this is this is me doing what I can. I labeled it, I put some units in. And you know, when you're taking the test, you probably wouldn't go through the process of writing this all down because you can, now that you've labeled it with the units, you can just tell where all these points are. I just did this for illustrative purposes for you to see. So the question says, in the complex plane, the horizontal axis is called the real axis. So we see that. And the vertical axis is called the imaginary axis, so we see that. The complex number A plus BI graphed in the complex plane is comparable to the point A comma B. And what that tells me is that the real axis is like the A axis and the imaginary axis is like the B axis. Um, graphed in the standard XY coordinate plane, um, which again, A, again, so A is like the X and B is like the Y. So that's all that's doing for us. The modulus of the complex number a plus bi is given by square root a squared plus b squared, so that's important to know. So modulus equals the square root of a squared plus b squared. Which of the complex numbers z1, z2, z3, z4, and z5 below has the greatest modulus? All right, so now we see that these values here become very valuable to us because we could just plug each of these ordered pairs into this modulus formula and see which one is largest. Um, I'm going to not do that and just use a little bit of logic here to say that, um, you know, for my A value, since I'm squaring it, it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So it looks like Z5, I'll use a different color, Z5 and Z1 have the largest absolute value a component, right, being 2. So that means that that will give me the largest A squared. And then for B squared, and I'll use a different color, for my B, it looks like Z1 definitely, you know, gives me the largest B value. There's nothing else even close to that. So Z1 has to be the right answer. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. It just means if I were to start plugging all these things in, 
right there, Z1 is going to win or is going to beat out all the other options because uh, both of its, you know, its A value, it does match its A value with Z5, so that wouldn't give it the win. But if I compare Z1 to Z5 and then use the B value, this 3 squared is 9, but this 1 squared is only 1. So again, just to show you, for Z1, my modulus would be negative 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is 4 plus 9, so that'd be square root 13. And for Z5, my modulus would be 2 squared plus 1 squared, which is 4 plus 1, which is only square root of 5. So that's the reason why Z1 is the best answer here.